shockers. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie wouldn't know what those shockers the are. The wing nuts. <laughs> the wing nuts. <laughs> the wing nuts. <laughs> the wing nuts. Yeah, there's a team called the there Wichita is, wing yes. nuts. I forgot what the other uh -huh. is. Like Someone in Wichita would name us team that. The wing nuts. nuts. <laughs> I've always wondered about that myself. <sighs> Wichita has an image problem for a reason. <laughs> hey, we are live, so. <laughs> and there's a reason why so people are in the from city Kansas. Council are looking for the, where this broadcast is coming from. <laughs> They're like, I, I see know. that guy. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne. Hi, hey, Joanne. Becky, Ellen, Stephanie, Mary. All right, so Hi, today everyone. we are talking about simple summer meals because we're in Kansas and it's hot and humid. And no one wants to turn on any cooking device at all because it's hot and humid. Stop it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long so day. <laughs> we came up with, with simple summer meal ideas and plans. Now, I will admit, right before this, I made the mistake of going on Facebook for the first time in a week. And as I was doing that... We came up with three or four other shows <laughs> that we're going to film after this. We are? What? We are? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Before we go how rocks. Tar yes, Tara is um, trying to keep it in here and keep it on task. So I'm keeping it on task, right? Hi. So anyway, you guys can look forward to those. <laughs> As you mentioned, anyway. that we're broadcasting live from Wichita, Kansas. So we're broadcasting live from Mom's living room. What? Her famous, um, oh man, allergies. Her famous fireplace here from the Penny Pension Mama. Oh, it was famous, huh? All Should right. I dusted it? How did it go? So, Me and your brother, we better talk about that after this part, right? We still aren't done. We're actually going after the show to move more stuff. <laughs> It is in the back of my brother's pickup. Melissa says you ladies are looking beautiful. Because we decided Thank to haul you. three loads of rocks in the middle of all this, too. Because we're gluttons for punishment. Okay, here's my deal with summer meals. I know everybody loves their crock pots, but... Don't tell me it doesn't happen, because I know it does. Crock pots heat up your kitchen almost as much as an oven does. Maybe not quite as much, but they still, crock pots still heat up your oven. Not to mention, 90% of crock pot, pot, crock pot food is just nasty. It's slimy and it's overcooked, and there's only really a few me meals that I cook in the crock pot. Now, what are they for me? It's roast green chili, barbecue chicken, shredded chicken, um, something like sloppy joes, you could do something like that. Occasionally barbecue meatballs. I think that's about it. I don't really cook any, uh, soups well, or stews. Well, the thing is, so, I didn't, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, soups and stews, you don't want that stuff anyway in the summer. Mm -mm. Those aren't types of meals that settle well when yeah. you're hot you know and it's humid out so a lot of the stuff you do fix in crock pots or a heavier meal if you add yeah. if it's something other than a meat also um, I like to keep it just cool anything cool and refreshing and hot meats you know isn't always the way to go or hot mm -hmm. like I said stews but also people don't realize it costs more to cook in the crock pot than it does a lot mm -hmm. of the ovens yeah. and and that's another whole thing that we we've talked about before, but it it doesn't save money by using the crock pot and uh, in the and summer. And I know everybody's all into the instant pots, and if you have an instant pot, that's great. My friend Patty, she showed me how her one that's not defective works. I have to break in to say Shayla Cooper joined. <gasps> Shayla, don't open your garage door. Don't no. open your garage door, <laughs> sister-in-law. Can't tell everybody who that is. <laughs> That's my sister-in-law. Just don't open your garage door. <laughs> um, and by the way, we're going to be over there after the show. <laughs> um, so uh, they work great. I had considered getting one. 
but you don't need to go out and spend a hundred bucks on an instant pot to make it through the summer and that's yeah. what we're going to be talking about alternatives to cooking in your crock pot or your instant pot your air fryer those kinds of things the you know the instant that's pretty hundred bucks is pretty expensive I know a lot of people, like my friend Patty, she uses it every single day. She's definitely got her money's worth out of it. But for me, I don't have a place to store it. And so I'm not going to drag that heavy thing up and down out of my garage or bottom cabinet, which I don't have space for anyway. But for me, it's a storage issue. And yeah. you don't need a lot of these appliances to have Well, that's what meals. I was going to say. It's not so much if you love yours not to use it, it's if you don't have one, don't feel like you're missing out and you can't cook without it. Mm -hmm. You can make do just fine without yeah. it. You yeah. don't have to have crock pots and instant pots and things like that to, you know, cook with and that type of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Um, go for it, Mom. <laughs> go, thank Did you. I've been making notes all day. Hold on, Hold on. Mike's got to come in, yeah? Debbie said, my mom never used her crock pot. We used the microwave in the summer or just used the stove. Yeah. 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 I use the stove top. Ellen said, yeah. Like yeah, that's fryer? what I was going to say. Do air fryers stay cool or do they get hot? They're not. I, I don't know. Not, I heard they're cool, but. Yeah, they're not too A lot bad. of people saying they don't use the stove. But, you know, there's so, so many things that you can do without a stove. Without, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, cooking just minimal amount and not having to use yeah, any of those things. Yeah, I don't turn my stove on. I cook on the top of my stove I a do lot. do a lot of cook top, uh, stuff on the top of the stove. Mm -hmm. And then when I do cook, like we've talked about before, if I cook the uh, hamburger, I'll cook up like maybe two pounds and put it in the packages. Then I only have it on one day cooking. But what the do we? Freezer. But what do we but, use that hamburger for? We well, use it for made rights, sloppy joes, hamburger casserole would be another one. Tacos in a bag tacos. are good. Talk just regular tacos mm -hmm. are good. You know, you don't have to have a whole lot of heat for those mm -hmm. types of things. The made rights. That's, for those of you I know you're going to ask, because you usually do, uh, it's on page 187 in the book. Dining on a donkey and, uh, The else? made rights are good because you can make a huge batch of it, mm -hmm. package it up in the freezer, and then all you have to do is take it out when you need it and microwave it till it gets mm -hmm. warm and put it in buns. And it's really handy to keep on hand because you can keep buns and the, the meat in the freezer so if you had an expected company mm -hmm. or you're going to a barbecue or a picnic or something you need something fast. Also the made rights you can put in a thermos jug. Heat them up, put them in the thermos jug to wherever if you're going to a park or if you're on a trip and then you can just when you're ready to eat them put them in the buns with pickles yeah. sliced pickles in there so dining on a dime cookbook what can you do with those you can make up ahead made rights we already talked about um beef stroke or not beef stroganoff barbecue beef sloppy joes those are all good ones all the recipes are right here dining on a dime and then there's other things that I like even better sort of, we have like, now we have in our, if you have our quick and easy menus uh, book, we have Cobb salad wraps. That is so, there's just hardly anything to heat for that. And this is one time, I don't always, I don't always push it a lot, but there are times to buy a rotisserie chicken from uh, like Walmart or someplace like that. And it's in the summer. It's good to buy one once in a while because for um, me, no. I don't, yeah, and you know what, let me just, I'm getting off a little track here, but they only keep those on the rotisserie for like two or three hours, then they mark them down half price mm. throughout the day. So if you can find out when they put them out and, you know, when they're ready to put, you can get, uh, put them on again, mm. you can get them for half price. But a rotisserie chicken is good to get tear it apart, you can freeze part of it, and then use it for the Cobb salad wraps, or just a regular Cobb salad is really good. Um, chef salad is good. And one thing I like to do is to keep um, carrots clean, celery clean, hard boiled eggs, I've mentioned this before, already cooked in the refrigerator and cleaned in the refrigerator. You can even do lettuce. I take lettuce and just wash it off lay a paper towel in a uh, plastic container and we'll put the lettuce in there and it'll keep like three or four days perfectly fine in there so that if I need sa for sandwiches or a salad it's already clean and ready to go. These are very, get as much done as you can in the cool of the day and that'll help you know during the summer. But um, what was I saying? Okay. I got. Oh good. 
forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead. We are in Mom's living room, for those of you who are wondering. In Wichita, Kansas, uh -huh. which is different than our usual Colorado. Yeah. And there's some debate about the crock pot heating up the kitchen. I'm sorry, guys, you're wrong. Sorry. Um, hate to tell you, but if you <coughs> if you are running your air conditioner, you are probably not noticing yeah, you notice that it. your crock pot is heating up your kitchen. It is. I guarantee it. <coughs> I have used a crock pot for more than 20 years all the time. It heats up the kitchen. Brand new crock pots, old crock pots, they heat up your kitchen. That is why you do not put a towel next to your crock pot. Remember the big crock pot scares and all that? One person put a towel next to their crock pot and it went up in flames. Well, because it gets hot. So it is true that it does heat up your kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, you just may not be noticing it if you're running your air conditioner. Well, that's what I was gonna say that I forgot. That's why I buy a rotisserie chicken once in a while is because I don't run my air conditioner mm -hmm. very little, usually at night when I'm in bed, but very little. And so it's cheaper for me to buy a rotisserie chicken than to cook a chicken and have to turn the air conditioner on to cool the house because then I'm wasting money in that direction. So those chickens are really good to have for those. Um, did keep, you did you do what to what to use the chicken for? Well, that's why I was getting ready. Okay. Cobb salads, um, a chef, chef salad. salad. You can do uh, for sandwiches, chicken sandwiches, uh, chicken salad sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, pasta salad pasta is a salad. good one. You could do um, green chili is a is a hot meal that you can cook on the top of your stove. That's a really good one if you want something hot. Although people usually don't want hot stuff. Like but you Mom know, said, just but. have the chicken. Keep it simple. You don't need to combine a whole bunch. Just have the chicken laying on your plate with a cool mm -hmm. salad, you know, and maybe some type of bread or something. And a veg, simple vegetable is all that you really need, mm -hmm. you know, for that. So, um... Do you like being in Ann's house? Mm -hmm. Is it fun? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we want to tell them what ended up all over Nan's kitchen floor <laughs> this afternoon? Mm -mm. <laughs> By the way, you need to get in there and finish the job, yeah, Bob's going to finish afterwards. <laughs> a lot of people saying that they they like grilling to keep the house from yeah. getting warmed up. They just grill. Yeah, outside. you can. Dr I don't. I don't own a grill, so I don't do yeah. grilling very. Much. Oh, speaking of grilling, uh, I had a friend tell me a lot of times some people burn their chicken sometimes when they grill. Who? <laughs> and to keep that from happening from that chicken, now it will hit the chick uh, the kitchen up a little bit. But if you can boil that chicken slightly before you put it on the grill it gets it cooked all the way through so then you throw it on the grill and it just finishes up yeah. and gives the barbecue taste. but when you do grill if you have a grill when i grill i cook four meals worth of chicken on the grill or four meals worth of hamburgers on the grill and then i do the same thing i will chop up one chicken breast and put it in a pasta salad I'll chop up another one, use it for green chili. We'll do another one where it's just chicken with rice and vegetables, that kind of thing. Don't so. get rid, if you have like one hamburger left or one mm -hmm. hot dog left or something like that, don't, you know, let them dry rot in the refrigerator. Stick them in the freezer and then you can take and use like that hot dog and chop it up into a salad. Uh, you can chop it up into potato salad to give a little bit of a barbecue smoky flavor to the potato salad. Uh, if it's towards the end of August or whatever, you can t save those barbecued uh, individual pieces of meat to put in chili later on in the winter to just give it a little bit of good smoky flavor. So don't get rid of those little single things and let them die in the refrigerator. Put them in a container in the freezer and you can reuse them yeah. and everything. Or you can use it in pasta salad. Crumble up the hamburger or something in a pasta salad or something like that. So, so. our friends at a Goshen said they use their crock pot outside their RV and then they bring their portable air conditioner out to cool things down. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's like the person who was vacuuming the campsite. But you know, even at that, I used to, that. I used to, I used to, I used to, um, I didn't have a crock pot. I do, did have a crock pot, but it, when I didn't have one, I didn't have air conditioning sometimes in my house here in Kansas in the summer, but I could put the oven on very low, like, 170 to maybe 200, usually about 170 to cook uh, sour cream enchiladas or to cook some meats and everything like that. Because 
that was so low it really didn't heat up the kitchen a whole lot more than a crock pot does because the stove is much more insulated that's why it's cheaper to use it than a yeah. crock pot so what were but, you talking about <laughs> sorry which appliance i want to stay on my notes <laughs> which appliance was it <laughs> crock pot no but you were saying you used something else instead of the crock pot the oven oh it's called okay. the oven so another option is and there's a billion of them out there all over thrift stores i got mine for three dollars is a george foreman grill and that works really good too we got that for and we used it for a couple of summers also and that's a good way to cook chicken and stuff without heating up the kitchen but it's easy and portable i just thought i wonder if you could take and pour cornbread batter into a waffle iron and cook it like that oh yeah yeah so, yeah and do that but you know even though that's getting kind of okay grandma cooper kept it very tars grandma kept it very simple yeah. you she, would sit okay down. hold on my grandma was we're getting too complicated here my grandma worked on a farm and then um elizabeth Jean, hello um Hallie. Did you mow the yard? <laughs> Nan's going because mom's giving the Actually, I already eye. heard you mowed the yard. Thank you very much. Um, but she was a, she ha, they owned a farm. Mm -hmm. And then my grandma worked 40 hours a week at a nursing home on top of that. And they did tons of stuff with their church. She babysit the grandkids, which one of them's on here. Hello, Tommy. So my grandma worked and were, I mean, my grandma probably worked 80 to 90 hours a week. Oh, easy. Literally, easy. Literally work. Yeah. Not housework and that. No. Just work, She work. probably worked 80 to 90 hours a week, but she always had really good. Three good big, meals. They were farm family, so they believed in roast at lunchtime, you know, and so to put a little background on what mom's gonna say about her meals, so. Yeah, and I learned from her to keep it very easy. She would take and just slice a cantaloupe or slice an orange mm -hmm. and put it on the table. She would set cottage cheese on the table and she would do things instead of just putting the plain old cottage cheese. Well, sometimes she just put cottage cheese and slice tomatoes and we would just have cottage cheese and tomatoes with maybe another mm -hmm. slice of fruit and then a sandwich, at, you know, sometimes. She'd always serve bread with butter and jam. Yeah, always have bread with butter mm -hmm. and jam. Grandma? Lunch yeah. meat, you know, she would just use packaged lunch meat, but her mm -hmm. meals were so good and simple. Or she'd do a bag of chips, you know, something like that. But she'd put a large spread. We'd have pickles, she'd mm -hmm. have different pickles, different cheeses all, all laid out and dip and things mm -hmm. like that. And so it seemed like a large meal, but it was a very easy meal is what she did. She would take cottage cheese and simply put marsh, mini marshmallows with a little bit of sugar sprinkle on it, and that would be a perfect mm -hmm. size. You can add a package of Jello to make it fancyified if She you would want. sprinkle a, a couple tablespoons of Jello in it, yeah, some mm -hmm. Jello in it, and into the cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. She would take and add like uh, green peppers and tomato chopped up in the cottage cheese, depending on how busy the day. Like I said, she would just mm -hmm. slice the tomato and you know do that. So mm -hmm. these are very easy things that don't take hardly any work, you know, and that you can put. <laughs> what are you laughing at? My children are fighting on the live show. Ellie says I mowed the lawn but BJ refuses to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's, a no. He's a savage. He's a savage. <laughs> well, Luigi's going to take the scissors to it when we get home. This is keeping it real, folks. Our daughter is... is... <laughs> She's showing her frustrations on YouTube. Well, living with three brothers, well, poor thing. I feel so she sorry said, for BG it. I mowed the lawn, and BJ refuses to do, and he refuses to do any chores or clean up after himself. <laughs> Let me guess, BJ and Ellie would not make good roommates. <laughs> so I wouldn't make good See, roommate. when mom and dad are out of town, <laughs> it becomes Lord of the Flies at home. <laughs> <laughs> we have a home left. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah and so some meals that i cook right now all these meals guys are five dollars or less for the entire family to eat i don't care where you live we have proven it even for you canadians do you want me to share so, one of those well part of the secret too i was going to yes. say is do seasonal fruit this is the time to take advantage of fresh fruit you know watermelon what they had watermelon for i think it was 99 cents 
Oh, wow. For, it was a special. Yeah. You know, a whole, a whole watermelon. Usually it's a couple of dollars. Yeah. But that's not very much. You can get a lot of meals out of one watermelon, you know, for a family. And, yeah. and so use the seasonal fruit, cantaloupe, watermelon, strawberries, peaches, anything, because now's the time to eat them and use yeah. them. And, and Mike's sharing and a link. Okay, just so you don't think we're contradicting ourselves. <laughs> Everybody loves they're using their crock pots and we get that. So we have a post that's $5 crock pot recipes, $5 for dinner or less. Yes, even for you Canadians. So when you're using um, your crock pot on the front porch or on the dryer <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your comments. <laughs> um, but you can also make most of these on the stove top, which is how I do that. But I know a lot of people love you and crock pot stuff. So we have yeah, that so link in there. Yeah, so if it's working for yeah. anything we say, if it's working really good, you're saving money and it's working for you, keep doing it. Yeah. We're just giving ideas for people who don't have a crock yeah. pot, who, you know, maybe doesn't yeah. want to invest in something. And Big Bear says he likes barbecued beaver. I think we'll skip that one. <laughs> um, and Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Mom will put, or Mike will put the link in there for you for that because um, all these recipes are in there. Now, what do I do in the summer? I will either grill some chicken or fry some chicken on the top of the stove in a little bit of oil. And then I will cut up some um, peppers, cucumbers, baby carrots, serve those with ranch dressing and some rice. We'll have tacos. Um, we will have something simple like beef stroganoff with some vegetables. We'll have a pasta salad. We will have, um, I'll make a roast in the crock pot one day. Now, I don't do this all the time, but I'll make a roast, a big roast in the crock pot one day. And then that roast will last us between three and five dinners. And we'll have beef stroganoff or um, barbecue beef or something like that to go with it. So that's how I kind of yeah. do it a little and bit. And do but. sides like a pasta salad. That could be a whole meal too. That's where you can save some of the little pieces of hamburger or a hot dog and put in a pasta salad or do an Italian ham, uh, salad, ham leftover ham. Keep lunch meat like ham and turkey in there because <clears throat> then if you want to do a pasta salad or a chef salad, you've got that all, everything right mm -hmm. there ready to go. Um, I love doing um, things like you can take and slice a potato and put it in the microwave with a chunk of butter, microwave it, wave it till the potatoes are tender, and then sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese on it. It doesn't heat up the kitchen, and you've got your potatoes if your family loves potatoes. You know, that's a really yeah. good one. Yeah. Uh, I will put, um, well, no, I don't really do that. Never mind. But That's a bad tip. In our, uh, <laughs> quick and easy, in our quick and easy menus, we've got a lot of, I don't know why we've got a lot of good summer recipes. we got winter ones too, but we got like cucumber salad. And we've... So oh, Michael put the link. This is our quick and easy menus book. It's only available in ebook right now. But these recipes are in our quick and easy menus. We also have a crock pot ebook, both, if you want those. Um, We've got an orange salad in here that takes uh, spinach greens and oranges and onion and blue cheese with slivered almonds. You know, it's really, these are really good, do a lot of salads, and they can be a full meal in and of themselves. I have a, des this is my favorite summer dessert. All what you do is you buy an angel food cake. I can get them on clearance a lot and you slice it horizontally about three different layers. You mix a can of vanilla frosting with a eight ounce package of cream cheese, mix that together, spread it on the one layer, then put sliced fresh strawberries, put the other layer, layer spread it with, with the cream cheese stuff, and just go, until, go up to the top, you don't even put anything on the top, wrap it up, put it in the freezer, and you've got a real quick and easy dessert, you know, for, yep. uh, for Go ahead. We I also have, if you want to make homemade popsicles, we have, I forgot that link if you want to grab it. Michael grabbed the link. We have like 10 ways to make homemade popsicles. We've got fudge sickles and popsicles in Dining on a Dime. But on our website is, um, there, oh, that's, uh, the, that's the wrong one. We've got, no, uh -uh. right, oh. Well, Where did they go? Right 15 there. Super easy 15. Homemade popsicle recipes. Two ingredient homemade popsicles. Yeah. Those are an easy thing to do. And 
And you can also, you don't have to just do hamburger and hot dogs. And I, we've got a recipe for marinated pork chops to do on the grill. So we've mm -hmm. got a lot of grill recipes in here. We've got a good, different Dave. fruit salad. Do an orange float. I mean, the ice cream, you get protein and milk in the, in the floats. Or milkshakes are great, too, to have a milkshake with a meat and a salad. You know, maybe a simple Because that protein in the milkshake really counteracts <laughs> the 350 <laughs> grams of sugar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Donna made it. Well, and, and another thing is on the stovetop, you can do hash yeah. browns or country fries, you know, mm -hmm. for potatoes. No, but actually, back to the milkshake thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just doing that for all the healthy eating. We're doing a video on healthy eating after this because I got something to say. So. <laughs> but that one you're recording for later. <laughs> that one we're recording for later, oh. but. Back to the to the milkshake. There is nothing wrong with having a milkshake. Just don't I don't, don't do it every single night, and don't have yeah. one that's four sizes bigger Unless than you should be grandpa. eating. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, a ninety-year-old man can eat whatever he wants. Yes. By the time you've made it to 90, you can shove down whatever you want. I would just love to have to keep my weight up. I know. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. When we have, like, a milkshake, I don't let them eat, like, tons of cereal that day or tons of yogurt. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you and, and you don't let them out. eat the milkshake before they eat anything else. You no. know, it's kind of like a dessert. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've got uh, desserts. I got desserts. I guess this isn't really the question for this, uh, for co hot cooking, but I had a couple people saying that their kids won't eat meat or vegetables at the age that they are. Oh, dear. Oh, so what, do you mean because they're little? Well, they I think it's because they're little, but still, I was thinking... Okay, if they're like two, three-year-olds or a nerd, okay, whatever, but my kids... Now, my mom does not agree with me on this, but... My kids. You're going to see the fight here on camera. You're going to see the fight on camera. Is that what you're saying? I would put a tablespoon of what they didn't like, and they had to eat it. <gasps> now, Hootsie Fartsy right here hated broccoli, but I kept making him eat it, and now he loves the little trees on his plate. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's not, we've had several parents say things like, well, I can't get my kids away from the TV for dinner. Who is the parent here? Yeah. You, you are. Just turn, you shouldn't have the TV on at dinner no. or anything. Yeah. That's... The TV goes off. If they don't do it, you unplug the TV. If they plug it back in, you remove the TV and put it in your underwear drawer, and then they won't go near it. Okay? That's where I hide everything. My boys won't go you near the underwear drawer. You've got a big drawer, don't you? <laughs> Now I know where you put everything. <laughs> but here's the thing. For my kids, I put a little, David Joshua, I put a little okay. bit on the plate, but only like a tablespoon or two, depending on how old they were. If they didn't eat what was on the plate, they didn't eat anything else. Okay? I did put other stuff that they liked on the plate. Like, I wouldn't serve fish with sauerkraut and asparagus, asparagus yeah. for dinner. I would have rice with chicken with a new vegetable well, or Well, that's what I was going to say. With little tiny children, you have to be kind of careful. Their taste buds are not adapted to spicy foods and different yeah, no unusual spices. like sauerkraut and stuff like that. And so you have to be a little bit reasonable in that and get them to try mm -hmm. as much as they can at a certain age. It just depends on the age, <gasps> you know. That Norma said... You guys are my most favorite family on Facebook Live. I love you guys. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, oh, you know, you Jill. just have to be reasonable. <clears throat> Joanne said she loves your suggestions, Jill, but needs some chocolate, too. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm going to give you chocolate. Oh, just, oh, should I do that is. now? Okay. Go ahead. Should just so okay. that you guys Joanne, know. Here we go. Denise, We're going to have a all moment. all my chocolate friends on there. Okay, have a moment. Well, Tara felt so guilty about Mother's Day. She brought I'll me a it. guilt box. I I'm love. Blue. I hope she forgets it next year. I got me PJs, and then I'm gonna get to the good part though in just a second. Oh, this here, stuff that's is really good. Here. Can we show that? Yeah, Anybody? mom loves this raspberry oh. chipotle sauce from Costco. I put that on everything, on rice, on meat, on everything. But and then I got frosted rice krispie treats. But okay. I gotta show you, and I got a can of cashews. I mean, this was really a suck up box if ever there was one. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. 
I got this <laughs> chocolate covered almonds. You can notice quite a bit's missing and I have not shared with anyone, have I? Nope. Not, not even me. Nope. <laughs> and then look at this. Would you guys look at this? I know Denise doesn't like these, but oh my goodness. A whole bag. But Okay. That'll keep you through your birthday Okay, in three chocoholics, weeks. all you chocoholics, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Oh, Where did all this come look from? Look at, huh? Where your bank account. Oh, for Look at, these are the gigantic ones, too. These aren't just the big ones. These are huge. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> so I was, so here's what I was going to try and do. I love was, it. I was originally oh going to try and get this and have a stack like this tall. And then I realized that'd be like 30 candy bars. And I was like, well, maybe I not. could eat them. I could, I'll polish these off. I'll probably have, oh, at least one or two a week. Yes. So, okay. So, yes. So we had a comment. <laughs> We're hitting too many subjects off the subjects that we got to do videos for. Okay. So, we had the comment that my husband won't eat leftovers. <sighs> then let yes. him cook. Here's the thing. Stop calling them yeah. leftovers. Don't don't leftovers. Place. <laughs> don't, and don't do <coughs> leftovers. Don't take the same thing you mm -hmm. had the night before and just warm it up and put it on the table. Do something I'm different okay with, with it. You know? I know, but a lot of people don't like them just the same. And you can do so many things with that leftover roast, mm -hmm. that leftover chicken. So I that make a roast the first night. The second night, it's not leftover roast, it's beef stroganoff. The third night, it's not leftover roast, it's barbecue beef. The fourth night, it's not leftover roast, it's stew. So first of all, stop calling them leftovers. Secondly, if he doesn't like it, he can fix dinner, is my two cents. But, that's just me, the liberated feminist that I am. Would you call me a big feminist, dear? Uh, no. <laughs> but, but here's the but thing. But I would say you wouldn't put up with making separate meals. You no, right. she won't put up with anything, will she, Michael? <laughs> um... But, you know, even yeah. like if you have a little tiny bit of leftover potatoes, don't serve them as a leftover. Put them in soup for thickening or make potato pancakes out of them. Yeah. You can do so many different things. Don't just serve the same old, same old. If you've got a salad that has lettuce and tomato in it, uh, the next night make tacos and use that leftover salad in the tacos, you know, yeah. for your tacos. You have, that part of that is you have to think. You, you gotta put a little effort here into these meals. One, we try to get it to where you don't have to put too much effort, but at the same time, you have to do some thinking, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, once you get it down pat to doing these things, I can rattle off a million things to do with leftovers. I can rattle off a million menus just because I've done them so much that I have it down pat. It's like anything else. You go in and you don't have to learn how to brush your rebrush your teeth every mm -hmm. single morning. You've done it so much, you just mm -hmm. almost do it automatically. And so if it's hard at first, after a couple of weeks, you will start getting the, you know, the gist of it and doing it. Do we have other Jill? questions? Well, Jennifer said, I just gained five pounds seeing all of Miss Jill's news. <laughs> My chocolate, I know. And Amy know. says, Jill, that will do us for about a week, I think. <laughs> and Stephanie, uh, Stephanie's asking, who is Denise? Denise one is viewers. one of our viewers yeah. that uh, she and Jill are always talking in the chat about chocolate. Joanne and Denise and I and a few others of you on there are always hot, talking okay, about chocolate. Okay, what do you do with this? Oh, brother. My son would literally throw up when he tried some new vegetable. How would you solve that? To me, I think that is a rebellion issue. Yeah. I would take, I mean, if, if the, unless the... Unless you go to the doctor and they say he has an allergy, but yeah, it gets rebellion generally. And you have a discipline problem, you don't have a food problem. And quite frankly, I'm not sure how I would deal with it. Maybe make him clean up the barf. Um, I would probably have him clean up the barf. And I, I'm sorry, I, there are vegetables that I hate. Brussels sprouts, but after oh, eating yeah. them several times because Mike loved them and I fixed them for him and the kids because they loved them, I kind of started liking Brussels sprouts, but it never was to the point where I would throw up. To me, they're like eating dirt. There's nothing wrong with eating a bite or two to try a new food. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Now, 
if they try it a few times and they don't like it, that's fine. Like Ellie hates bananas. Okay, after we made her try them the first few times, she really just hated bananas. I wouldn't make her eat the bananas. But if it's a pattern of this pickiness where every single vegetable he tries like that, that's a rebellion problem. And you have a discipline problem, I think, over a, over a food problem. It kind of, well, it's kind of like a control. He's trying to control. Yeah. Control so, uh, first you. of all, I would make him clean up the puke. Yeah. If he's over about four years and old, I, he can I clean understand it up. what he's doing. I didn't throw up, but I would take and. I know. I was a picky eater, and my mom would make us eat stuff, and I would hide my peas under my plate. I'd throw it on the floor. I'd put uh, it in my mouth and swallow it with water. I never did learn to like them. Never did. I would take and ha excuse myself to go put them in, tuck them back in my cheeks as much as I could and excuse myself to go to the bathroom. But I would never have been allowed to throw up or to do anything, but you, you know. But you were rebellious, were you? N <laughs> actually, I really wasn't. It was a matter I just couldn't gag it down. It actually, yeah. it, it didn't, but I would never have been allowed to throw up on a regular basis. At least says, peacing out, fam squad. Bye! 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 Bye. You know, and, yeah, I mean, honestly, if it was my kid and it was just a rebellious <clears throat> thing, I would give him a swat on the butt. And you as, you as the mom is the one who Sorry. can tell whether yeah. there's something, whether it's rebellion or something. Yeah. Well, we always something had wrong, to, we always to had to try yeah. something. I think they need to taste it first and at least taste yeah. it. And then if they say, well, I just can't stand it, yeah. that's a different thing. But not to taste it. And another thing I always did, and I always made the kids do, if we were at somebody's home or somebody cooked something for you, you didn't sit there and say, ooh, I don't like that, I'm not gonna eat it. They mm -hmm. had to eat it, and they had to eat it without saying anything, no matter what, and so, you know. Yeah. And if you want, okay, so if you want an actual example, let's say this was my kid, because I know everybody's like, well, but you didn't answer the question, okay. If it was my child, let's say David, my love back here, my man, Who's currently if he was food? over four years old and he would throw up when he would try food out of rebellion, I would make him clean up the barf and then I would take away the computer, I would take away the TV, I would take away everything. If my that didn't work, I would make him clean up and then he'd go to his room and sit for 30 minutes or something. But you have to consistently discipline him every single time he does it. Yeah, you have to be consistent. You have to consistently do it. And it may take you a month or more yeah. to get over this habit that he has created. But when he associates, I don't get the computer, I don't get the iPad, I don't get the phone, whatever, taken away, then um, with throwing up with that food, he's going to stop. He mm -hmm. will stop. Yeah. And the thing is, is <clears throat> you have to discipline him to do that. And that's where parents fall through. There's a whole other show, but I see it all the time. Parents say, well, my kid just won't do this. I said, well, have you disciplined? Well, but they really need the computer. No, they don't. You mm -hmm. take away the iPad. Make them go to their room without toys or whatever make and them go sit on your bed what's more important <laughs> them learning to not rebel to be responsible mm -hmm. or to get their homework done on the computer for that yeah. evening yeah you know to me it's more important for them to learn to be responsible and not to rebel it's summer right now is a perfect time you don't have the homework excuse none of that that's what I would do. Yeah. Dying on a Dime Cookbook. Mike is putting the link in there for you. We had a couple people ask, but yes, a lot of these tips are in our Dining on a Dime. Okay. Well, uh, Pinky Patty, well, I think is also talking about the issue, said he literally threw up till he understood he didn't have to eat it. He just had to try it. There were enough veggies he liked. I could always get enough in him. There you go. Yeah. 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 It was never, you know, yeah, a big that issue was, it was for a me discipline or, issue. Yeah, well, you yeah. Could probably, and like you said, as the mom, you could probably tell. Yeah, you can tell when whether the issue they're is really it. that they're working you or if they're. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be honest, with Ellie, when she was, let's see, she would have been. Whew, are we still on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with Ellie, we sat one time two or three hours. Because she refused to eat one bite of a banana. I'm like, I have never heard of a kid not liking a banana. <laughs> but she realized mom meant business. Now, it was torturous for me to have to sit there that long until she but tried that's it. that's what you have to do as, as a parent. Parents, that's the hard thing about that's being That's what you have to do as a parent. I would wait for hours with her. And you know, you're being selfish 
as a yeah. parent when you yeah. don't do that. You're thinking more of how much it's hurting you or bothering you mm -hmm. if you don't do it. You need to be strong and love that child enough to do these things. Yeah. You're getting a lot of chocolate questions. Are you going to freeze the chocolates? Save no, them I'm going to eat them. I'll eat all of them. I really will eat them fast enough. Chocolate I will. heaven. <laughs> the only reason I still have them is two reasons. We had to show them on the show, which I didn't con totally control myself. And the other thing is we've been gone from the house every single day since Tara gave them to me. Otherwise, they would have been probably yeah. mostly gone. Yeah. And guys, we are not, we need to get off the subject, but we're not talking about children with food allergies. My brother used to eat a peanut and would throw up. And, and break out And we were like, what in the world? Well, then he started breaking out yeah. in hives. Yeah. And then he started getting an asthma attack. So then we realized that's an allergy and we are not talking about that. No. So just so that's you know. That's why I say the well, mom also, knows if it's rebellion or just. And a lot of people just... are talking about sensory issues. But the thing is, if you have whatever it is, what is the child called? Autism or if something. If you have autism that's or something, we're not talking sensory about that. issues. That's, we're talking a normal kid. If, if you have autism or something, sensory issues are something to be concerned about. If you have a kid who just says, I don't like things with texture, that's more of a rebellion issue. Yeah. But, That's I mean, right. It's different it's if it's a mom, medical where thing. Where mom comes in and knows, yeah, yeah I just don't want to do it. Thing. And we did yeah. say we said it's only when they do it out yeah. of rebellion that you do this. Yes. So anyway, okay, back to our summer tips. <laughs> Can you figure out where you were? I don't know. Oh well, we have even in dining we have um, our yogurt dip in there which i like to have where you take uh and it's cool these are cool things you can have these sides see with uh 174 dining on a day we're giving you recipes and kind of menu ideas to do these you just take a vanilla yogurt and you put in some brown sugar and some crushed pineapple stir it together and you've got a nice side or you could use it as a fruit dip whichever you want you can eat it just you know as a side too but one thing i was wanting to get on to is the um uh, desserts. I like to keep desserts really, really easy. You can have ice cream in the freezer, whether you have company or for your family. Take vanilla ice cream with some chocolate, of course, hot fudge, and just take a scoop of that and do that for dessert in the summer. Uh, you can do fresh fruit. Just have a, you know, a bunch of really good fresh fruit. We have, do we have ca uh, cantaloupe balls in here? No. We don't. We have it well, on website. Oh, yeah, no, we, we do. have cantaloupe balls. Yeah, we do, the cantaloupe balls. We have cantaloupe balls where you take and make cantaloupe. Uh, you, I just cut it in chunks. You can make it yeah, use melon 64. scoop and make it into balls. And you can put uh, sugar and, and corn syrup on oh, Corn syrup, I said the horrible word. <laughs> corn, corn syrup. syrup. <laughs> You'll live. But it makes a really <laughs> light, and even though it does have sound sweet, it's a really light dessert, you know, for summer. Cantaloupe bowls right there, page we've got, 64. In quick and easy, we've got lemon fluff where you use uh, concentrated lemon juice and, uh, or not lemon juice, frozen lemonade. And uh, you put some uh, vanilla pudding, powdered vanilla pudding and Cool Whip, <coughs> or whipped topping, mm -hmm. and mix it together. And it's really light, it's not a heavy. These are all light things. You wanna mm -hmm. think light and not make heavy desserts like a pumpkin pie, you know, or something heavy like that. So keep the desserts light. And then I was gonna do, do you have a question? No, I was just gonna actually have a technical thing. A uh, few people are having trouble on the YouTube side. Uh, in, in the chat, there's, uh, if it says top chat, you might wanna to switch to live chat because top chat, I guess, only shows you some of the comments and live shot sh chat shows you everything that's happening the whole time. So if you're missing some comments, and it's where do they it's, find it's, it? It's at the top of the chat box, and you can there's a little arrow there, and you can switch from it, from top chat to live chat. Yeah, if it says top chat, then you want to switch it to live chat if you're missing some yeah. of the comments, because there's tons of comments happening. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah, go and ahead. you can guys. Oh my goodness, people! <laughs> if you don't like corn syrup, use any sugar sugar substitute of your choice. <laughs> It's or okay. Just slice cantaloupe. Sprint. Just like cantaloupe and watermelon for dessert. <laughs> okay. Adapt it to what you need. You know, you don't have to. <laughs> you can use honey. You can We're use We're giving you coffee. tips you and hints, you know, on what to do on these things. So stop <laughs> stressing out about the food. You're going to kill yourself over a heart attack, which we don't want. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I was going to touch on bit. What? <laughs> 
I'm just, I have so many shows. I'm like, we're going to be here till midnight doing shows. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Uh-oh. Speak for yourself. Michael have, and I will rebel. We have rocks and We will rebel. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, um, for beverages, one thing for beverages that I do, and these work really good for if you're uh, going on a trip, if you're going on a picnic or to the park or something like that. I t- it's to me it's a, I've never bought bagged ice before. I don't think I've ever bought bagged mm-hmm. ice. Maybe I have once or twice, but mm-hmm. oh, so, well, I didn't mean to interrupt in that moment. But Sue's just asking if you can use sherbet to make milkshakes. Sherbet, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you yeah. know what'd be good with sherbet is to pour like a Seven Up over them. Mm-hmm. It'd yeah. be really good. Another thing I love in the summer is I take orange. Uh, not orange, grape juice concentrate, and I put two tablespoons in a glass and pour ginger ale on it. That is probably like the best drink. It's not really sweet or anything, and it, it's really re- yeah. kind of like refreshing a type yeah. great drink. But anyway, so you're going to be going on picnics and to parks and stuff. So instead of messing with the ice, I either take uh, plastic bottles. I don't buy wa- bottled water. I don't uh, buy, you know, I have a lot like that, so I have to get the bottles from the kids or something. But I have a, some plastic bottles that I take and I pour in. Um, I, I pour in iced tea or lemonade. You could do just about any type of drink. Drink, and I put it only <clears throat> halfway, and then I freeze those bottles of the lemonade or the iced tea or whatever. Then the day right before I get ready to leave to use it, I will pour the rest of the liquid into it so it's half frozen half liquid and by the time you're ready to use it or drink it it's cold that you know it's kept it cold and the kids love the lemonade on a trip they love it because after and it lasts forever it lasts probably about four or five hours in the car just as is let alone if you put one of those insulated things on but the kids love it because towards the end it gets kind of slushy even with the iced tea it's really good slushy like that and then you don't have to mess with the ice I do that with bottled water too. I take water all the time where I freeze half of the water. And if I'm going to be running around all day in town, I will take and fill the other half up with water before I leave. And I've got icy cold water that sits in the car and it doesn't melt immediately. You now, know, a little fine. disclaimer because I know we're going to get all the emails and comments. Mom is a little bit over 50. And for the last 65. <laughs> And for the last 65 years, <laughs> she's been drinking frozen water in a plastic bottle. And let me tell you, she's here to tell about it. No yeah. cancer, no nothing. Guys, it's not going to kill you. Just save your breath. It's not going to kill you to drink frozen water you know, or frozen anything okay, out of a this, plastic bottle. It's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> and like you said, this is another whole video. Uh, I am so concerned because people have given in to a spirit of fear for everything. everything. And what you don't and what you don't realize is these people do this to advertise. I okay, I'm gonna say that I know we're getting into I'm opening a can of words, but I can't keep it in anymore. But I I do a lot of research on these things. I mean, I really and I don't just research the side I want to believe and the side I want to accept. I research both sides, the pros and the cons. And I was researching on the um, on organic food uh, quite a while back. Oh, and no! I know, I'm sorry. I have to say it, I've never had a chance, so I'm saying it. But I want to explain to you why this really is a spirit of fear because they went and I, this whole thing was oh, on this, this CEO. <laughs> The CEO, if I named the company right now, every one of you just about even would know who this company is. When they first started the company, the board of directors, one of the men in the board of directors said, Protect me, please. They're going to see child of abuse. The board of the one of the board of directors said, "Okay, we've got this new this organic food that we're going to try to do this whole company on organic food and sell to people. How in the world can we convince, or are we going to sell this to these people when the food is exactly the same?" He said, "These apples are exact. These regular apples are exactly the same as our organic apples. How in the world are we going to talk them into paying four times the amount for our stuff?" over regular apples. He said, nobody in their right mind is going to do that, to pay that much more 
for the, I know I'm getting in really deep. I have to deal with the comments. I know you do. But I'll just <laughs> say this really fast. It'll be over just fast. Just blame it on your mother. <laughs> And he said, you know, there's no difference. How are we going to convince them that there's nothing we can prove is any better? They had no proof that it was any it's better. It's not higher in nutrients, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And it's not anything. And the CEO of the company looked at him and said, when I started this company, I have that all figured out. We have, and he named this exorbitant amount of money for advertising. And he said, we're going to tell everybody that if they don't eat our organic food, they're going to have health issues as far as cancer and heart problems, and they have to eat our organic food or they're going to get uh, sick. And he said, you mark my words, they're going to buy that stuff like crazy. This was, a, what, 15, Probably 20, 20 years, years ago. ago yeah. He said this, and look what's happened. And I knew about it then. I thought, people, surely people wouldn't do this. Surely they wouldn't do this. And there's a reason why there's no... There's no study. Well, you talk to that. You talk to... Well, we talked to a scientist. We're really getting in deep. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we did. I am so sorry. We talked to a scientist who is a professor of chemistry at a fairly large university recently, in person. But he was hesitant to be interviewed on camera. He did not. Yeah. He didn't want to be... He wasn't as brave yeah. as we are spitting it he out. He didn't want to be interviewed on camera. I did ask, and he... he politely declined because he didn't want to get in the middle of it but he said you know he said and this is the kind of person that I honestly thought would say yes you need to eat organic food and all that and he said you know what he said honestly most pesticides are water soluble if you rinse them off in water 99% of it comes off he said people are gonna die from the stress of worrying about what they're eating before they're gonna die from harm of eating foods that have been grown with pesticides and herbicides. Now, this came from a professor who I honestly thought he was as granola as they get, like we like to say. And I mean, I thought for sure he was gonna say it. And he said, you know what? He said, live your life. He said, my mom is 85 years old in a nursing home. And he said, you know, I don't know that I wanna live to be that old having someone have to take care of me, they have to feed mm -hmm. me, I, she can't go to the bathroom by herself. And she's, he said, live your life and enjoy it and stop worrying about what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Well, it, this is actually kind of connected to, I think it's partly because with the internet, everybody feels like we have access to all this information. Unfortunately, it's not always correct information. No. Yeah. And there's so much information that we have to make decisions about things that people never even thought about before. But the thing is, I think what he was saying, and what I've been saying all along, is uh, what is the probability of this being a problem? Like, like, there are a lot of things that have a one in a billion chance of killing you. And But the thing is, that's such a small probability, it's not worth worrying about. Like the arsenic in your well, rice. And I was going to say, we had somebody, some people were really upset about uh, there being arsenic in rice uh, six months ago or something. Yeah. And I did some research, and... and uh, there was a thing that had been reported all over the news, and that's the first clue that it's a major problem, if, uh, that it's a major problem that you shouldn't be listening to it. Because if it's reported all over the news or it's shared a lot on Facebook or some guy who has ads that say grocery stores fear him on the internet says it on his blog, those are not good sources of information. Mm. The thing is that I did some research and found out there was a study that they were referring to, and it said that they thought that possibly as many as, what was it? want uh, two and a hundred thousand people might might die in their lifetimes as a result of arsenic from food but I was thinking you know one in 89 people dies from a car accident mm -hmm. and I just I went online and I looked up the uh, insurance and people are still driving cars nobody's talking the about not driving cars uh, industry keeps a list of statistics and I can't remember what their group is called but you can you can type in probability of dying from and it's like the first thing that comes up is this insurance thing <clears throat> and I was thinking to worry greatly and change your entire life over something that's has a two in a hundred thousand, possibly a two in a hundred thousand probability of killing you, but you still drive your car, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, Tar and I have dealt with this so, type of thing for years. Yeah, just because it, just because it may, there may be some connection somewhere. I mean, yeah. you don't. I'm not afraid to go outside because there's lightning sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. are do you do you not? I don't go, go outside. outside the, I don't go out in the storm. Sun? 
I mean, do you never go out in the sun because you might get cancer? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't but live we, that way. Tara and I have dealt with these types of things for many, many years. And you know what I hear in people's voices on the comments and stuff? There is so much stress because they're spending money on special food they can't afford to buy. There is so much stress because of fear and worry about it that that's what's going to kill them more than anything. Even if there was a chance there was something, which they don't really, they have no studies because there is nothing really, not if you're honest. Now, it's like that company. They will say, if you watch, there's clue words like, it could, it might, there's a chance. It can there's, cause. Yeah. yeah. And there's the thing is. There's all clue words when you know well, that that's, they have no proof. And I saw a few people commenting and saying, in my opinion, this is a problem. But is your opinion because you heard people say it? Because one of the things that's really a big problem in our culture is it's, People hear things, and depending on how scary the story sounds, that's what they use yeah. to determine whether it's true yeah. or not. But the thing is, to know if it's true, you kind of have to find evidence. Like, and if you and if you found evidence, that's I mean, if it's hey, there's a blogger that said this on his conspiracy website, I wouldn't really call that evidence. I typically will look for X Y Z University did a double blind study that's been verified in a medical journal by some other group. And or talking to the scientists like Tara did. You or know. talking to chemists, because a lot of the things that people are worried about in chemistry, it changes. Yeah. Like, like sodium, sodium actually is, sodium in certain forms is nutritionally good for your body. But sodium is toxic and will kill you in other forms. Mm -hmm. But because chemistry, the way chemistry works, it's different components bond to other things. And something that's terrible might not be terrible then. And so that's why... Well, I even, even years ago, I used to say, if you can't pronounce it, then it's not good for you. Well, you know, there's a lot of things now I'm that sorry. there's no being, way I can pronounce it, but everybody swears up and down they're so wonderful for you. Being gluten-free, I am very thankful for Xanthum gum. Now, what is Xanthum gum? Nobody knew what that was 20 years ago. Now we know <coughs> it's just a filler that enhances the palatability of food with the texture and that kind of thing. It sounds like it's a crazy, crazy chemical. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. A lot of these chemicals, we're all made up of chemicals. I know. Water chemicals. is a chemical. Yeah, everything's about well, our body. Well, that's the thing, is, that's the thing that's, that's, a, that's important to be aware of is you can call, I, when I was in television, this was one of the things that a lot of people on TV, when they report things, or rely on these details that pretty much anything that has two different atomic units put together is a chemical. Mm -hmm. So you can call things chemicals, but are they dangerous? Maybe, maybe not. It just depends on that particular thing. Mm -hmm. And and so when I'm talking about the scary thing though, people can say scary things and, and because it's scary, everyone else believes it. And like, they use scare tactics yeah. to, uh, to so, so Mike's, so Mike's, you know, being, you know, me, get it together, people. But Jennifer says, Mike is trying so hard to be nice. Stop being paranoid, people. <laughs> Seriously, well, listen, but, but, none of us are getting out of this alive. Period. But the probability of dying die. is one out of one. Now, your probability of dying in a car accident over getting cancer from something like pesticides or herbicides is a hunt what was it 600 times more something we we saw or something somewhere of getting cancers it was a huge amount i can't remember what it was but hundreds of times more of dying in a car accident over even just plain dying from cancer so you got to stop worrying my, about all this my dad had one of the best heart specialists in the country at one time and they asked him, okay, what do I have to change? Is it my diet? Do I need to change my diet? He said, people don't realize it's not the diet. It's the stress in your life that causes mm -hmm. your weak heart to do these things. And you've got to get the stress. He said, I always recommend counseling to all my heart patients because they need that way more than their diet changed. And, you know, that rang bells in my, you know, set bells off of my wood. I can't say it on air. <laughs> Jennifer says, what if it's the pilot's time to go and not mine? <laughs>
well, then you better hope you can fly a plane. But, you know. Well, and the, the thing is that some, a number of people also have, have kind of just been, a number of people have also been saying, well, you know, I, I, I had some terrible condition until I stopped eating this. That might be that might be the cause, but the thing and is, and people have food sensitivities. We get that. But food That's sensitivities okay. totally different. That's but the fine. thing is, there were there are other possible causes for things. If you have it, if it's not actually like kind of just saying my gut says is not necessarily true. Like my grandmother got cancer and died eventually, but while she was still alive, she was just sure saccharin was what killed her because. That's what they were talking about in the news yeah. at the time. That was the scary story. Since then, I don't, I don't like saccharin really, but the thing is that it's, it's been studied greatly and it's back on the market. And the reason why is because they couldn't actually find evidence that it was hurting people. But also, but okay. in the end, the doctor said that my grandmother probably died from a lot of fried food. Well, yeah. the thing is, you've got to be very careful because. And genetics. Mentally, and genetics, ment yeah, genetics is huge. Yeah. Genetics is huge. I don't care if there's cancer in your family or you're gonna. Yeah, I mean, if your family has a predisposition to cancer or diabetes or, or anything, diabetes or what, I don't care you what, do what you, you eat. Need to the do chances for that. are pretty good you're gonna you but, know have have it. But the thing is, what I have found is there are more people that believe sometimes, eighty percent of the time at least that they think the food is bothering them when it's but because they believe it's your body your body will react the way you think it's going to react to different things if you think sugar is bad for you you're you can convince yourself you may not have any problem with it but you can convince yourself that that sugar is bad for you and every time you eat it you can make yourself sick because your mind can tell yeah. your body to be sick so be careful make sure you're just not you know making excuses too and stuff uh dora says amen my son is a chemistry chemistry professor and he says i will die of old age whatever i eat i'm already i'm oh. already what oh sorry uh, I, am, I am already though i am already <laughs> though okay but, amy t said if it starts as a breaking news ad, we will tell you at six, then it's fluff. If it's something you really need to know, they will tell you now. So and, yeah. and I oh, can yeah. tell you, having worked in television for 20 years, that is absolutely true. And mm. I thought it was funny because one time, I, I've been a big critic of this kind of stuff forever, but one time I, I was, it was actually a Wichita news station when we lived here, and they came on yeah. and they said, Careful. Is, this, is this common household no. item killing your children right now? The story at 10. <laughs> it was yeah. Like, if it was really killing the children right now, would you hold the story till dead? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the idea is terrify you into watching, so that the, ad the advertisers get paid. Yeah, yeah. It's all. And guys, I listen. Denise missed your chocolate, so show her all oh, your chocolate while oh, I'm talking. Oh, look at here. Look what she got me. Can you envy? Is envy happening out there? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. here's one thing I would like to say. I have a lot of really, really, really good friends online that I dearly love and dearly respect who do not use chemicals. And y'all know who you are. Here's the thing. But you highly respect them? I highly respect <laughs> yeah. them. I love them a lot. But when i go on their youtube channels and i see their videos talking about organics and all their stuff i don't go and start spewing my opinion on it now i have actually talked in person with these people and we've had a decent conversation but neither one of us gets nasty about it neither one of us yells and i have to say if you think we are wrong and you feel the need to comment you are being wrong because when you're getting nasty and mean, if you don't agree with us, so what? Yeah. You don't need to say anything. I don't go to my friends' YouTube channels and me. say, well, you're just wasting all your time and energy picking all those dandelions. Get that some 2,4-D and get rid of them. And so I, I don't do that because Trust if they me. want to do that, I'm totally okay with it. I truly am. I really don't care. And I don't understand why it's it's especially when people are talking about regular food, the organic people 
come and really land blast you and are mean and nasty and hateful to the point where I have had to block the words organic pesticides and herbicides in my comments so those comments don't even come through on my YouTube channel. It's ridiculous. There is no reason to be fighting and arguing over this. I it know. goes back to the stress thing. Yeah, it's that's ridiculous. What's, that's what's happening. It's like tearing people apart. It's just tearing It's ridiculous. And when it starts doing that, that's not a good thing, no matter what it is. When it's tearing people apart and making hurting people. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason. And I still, my friends who believe in the organic and that's all they want to do, I still love them. We still have a ton in common just because we don't agree well, on that. I, doesn't I mean never that ever said anything about organic anything for years and years because I lived in Boulder, Colorado, girl, in the 60s. So you can the imagine. Organic capital of the world. I never even thought anything. I mean, I didn't really think anything about it. If they wanted to do that, it didn't bother me. But what I get frustrated with now is that people are making an issue, a cause out of it. Yeah, there's and, no and reason. It shouldn't be, causes tend to hurt people sometimes. You know, they can get really out of control and hurt people and things like that. And so when it, when it turns into that, it's not a good thing, I don't think. Yeah, and even the fast food and processed foods. Yeah. I have no problem with it. Honestly, I've been thinking about going on the McDonald's diet. What? Eating 1,200 <laughs> yeah. calories of McDonald's every day because there was a guy who actually did it. A guy who went on the Twinkie diet. It is not what you eat. It is how, how much, much you, you eat. eat. You can eat all the organic homegrown food in the world and still be 50 to 100 pounds overweight, which is way worse. worse worse for you than, than eating any of the, the pesticides other, yeah. so and I, i'm right there i've got 40 more pounds to lose i i'm not saying i i get it i have the same problem i'm a stress eater i get it but here's the thing you you cannot just keep worrying and worrying about this stuff. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Well, and Tara's not endorsing fast food particularly, right? <laughs> she's just saying... I say go for it. If you eat your 1,500 calories a day and it's all saying, McDonald's, go for it. obsessing about something greatly is a big thing. It's kind of like the... Uh, what do you call it that you're always talking about? Portion control. Portion control, yeah. Tara was using portion control to prove that it works. <laughs> and so far it's been working great. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Do we have any more? Okay, so that just totally took a whole turn to where we thought we were going with this show. <laughs> All right, so let's see For what we have For simple meals. Here. The um, thing is with the summer stuff, just put a, there's nothing wrong with having a sandwich in the <laughs> evening with a piece of fruit and and a bag of chips or something, yeah. or See, a, you know, a relish tray, you know. Melissa is talking about a Taco Bell diet. There you go. Yeah. And actually, sadly, I'm not on the Taco Bell diet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I was doing a lot of Taco Bell on my diet last fall where I lost 30 pounds. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. but the thing and is, you have to choose the right thing. You, know, you can't just I eat I think one of the funniest things happened just recently. I think I told you guys about it on a video when I was back there. Um, when my dad, you know, he had this heart attack. Of course, he's 90 years old. And the doctor came in to tell us he's doing fine. His heart now is probably what they did was just a thing in his, in his, that they had to fix. And they said his heart is healthier and is better shaped than probably ours were, us younger ones were, uh, people were. And my brother sits there and looks at her and says, okay, um, so what kind of food does he need to change his diet when he gets home? And and she kind of looks at him like, you know, I don't care what he's on. This man is 90 years old and he's healthier than all of us put together. And she said, well, what's he's eating? And, and he said, well, ice cream and Pepsi all the time. And, and she said, well, you know, maybe we should all go on an ice cream Pepsi diet to be, you know, in as good a shape. And this was coming from a really good heart doctor. So just use reason, good common sense reason portion control you know and okay. and one more thing on the chemicals vinegar does not disinfect no <laughs> be as careful. well as be bleach careful with that there's been some arguments on here it does no. not it has we, been proven, proven several times on many studies vinegar kills about 80 percent 
Bleach kills 99%. I'm sorry, I'm not and, taking a salmonella and another, chance. No, and I'll tell you one other no. thing. When you go to the hospital and there's been a horrible infectious disease person in a room, you want them to clean with Clorox, not mm -hmm. vinegar, and that's why hospitals still use Clorox. If you don't want Clorox, you can use rubbing alcohol. It works just as rubbing well. Rubbing uh, peroxide works. vinegar is not no, a disinfectant. It, it is, is not, not a disinfectant. It's good for taking streaks off. It's good for taking scum off. It is not a disinfectant. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we've just got all, all the heavy anyway. Let's get okay. on. Let's get so, on the breastfeeding so now. Oh, really? Yeah. Breastfeeding mother, now, mother, <laughs> stop, mother. I have a few people asking about how. Uh, we have a few people asking how is moving your brother going. <laughs> Um, there's a man in your front yard, mother, with a weed eater. He, he's 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 chopping oh, the weeds. Man. Just let him it's chop your man. the weeds. It's my man. Do we need the to know about the weeds are coming this? down? Do it's not my ask man. <laughs> um, okay, did we finish on our summer? Yeah, we're we're just keep it okay. simple. You know, this okay. is what we're trying. So <laughs> several people asked. Uh, um. Oh, Jean, we were summer meal ideas for the whole first. <laughs> Only 50 minutes of the show, um, but if you missed it, you can go back and watch it after it's over, or yeah. on YouTube, you can go back and watch it right now. So. Um, Lisa said, Thank you. You will get the bleach when you pry it out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> Me too. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've seen too many people with food poisoning. I do not take a chance. Wait. I wash my hands thoroughly after every meat contact, wash everything that I come in contact with, and bleach it because it's just not worth yeah, it. Yeah, that's another thing too. Percentage-wise, organic food tends to cause E. coli. Yeah. That's why you're seeing a bigger rise. Mm -hmm. If you notice, they're taking, what, lettuce off the market, yeah. a romaine just recently. They had three mm -hmm. people in Wichita die from organic natural ice cream, mm -hmm. I think it was last year. Uh, so you got to be careful with this stuff because people are believing it and people are dying and getting sick. And if you're afraid to die, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> then you won't have to be afraid. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Continue. We had <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, several people were asking if we got my brother moved. We'll hit that real quick. Um, yes and no. We have about one car load worth of his stuff left here. Tonight after the show, if we ever end. <laughs> I'm going to be busting rocks tonight. We're going to be moving rocks for my sister-in-law. My mom's neighbor had some rocks. And my sister-in-law was like, oh, those are so pretty. And we're like, well, we'll move them for you. <laughs> so we've moved. This will be our third truckload of rocks. Because um, we're gluttons for punishment. But we got everything done. Let's see. What did we get done? We, we got, got towel done. rods hung. We got toilet papers, uh, rolls holder thing side Light switches we got it thoroughly cleaned we got the light switches done sink we changed. got the sink new disposal new sink bathrooms painted bathrooms painted uh new lights in the garage we got um that everything thoroughly being... thoroughly cleaned mm -hmm. so all we have left is to hang may the lord help us <laughs> The over the stove microwave. Please pray we don't drop it on the brand new stove. And that we can drill through the tile. The masonry. <laughs> Never done that before and don't want to crack all my brother's tile. Um, so we have to hang the, the microwave. You got the dog poop picked up. Got the in dog the yard poop mode. picked up. The woman had this monstrous dog. I have never seen turds so big. Where was oh. some? I mean, I've never seen anything like whoa, that before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This show is Jack turning, taking a turn south. <laughs> Jack and I picked up dog poop yesterday. David got the yard mowed, so I think tomorrow is our last day, and then we'll get to start on Mom's house. <laughs> so um, we're probably going to go home the end of the week, weekend, somewhere there. Mom's projects aren't near as massive as my brother's. We honestly didn't think my brother would have this many projects. 
Did but, you, I didn't hear. Did you describe some of what we've done? Yeah. 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 We changed toilets, too. We changed the toilet. Yeah, oh, and we had to relay scene. the linoleum after we pulled the toilet up and the linoleum came with it. And, it's just and, been and on and the on. Sink and the it really yeah. was yeah. like in Money Pit where you did Everything one thing and then the something yeah. else kept going and going. Yeah. You know, and Mike and I spent about, let's see, we spent nine hours total changing the kitchen sink. Of course, we could find no tools. We could yeah. find, and every time we needed something, we had to run down to the hardware store. So it's been pretty crazy around here. So yes, we are almost done helping my brother move. Um, and what else? So we're gonna be here. We're gonna film a few videos with mom while we're here. Not maybe. live. Not live. Because um, if we're not doing enough, we need. Arlene to do it. loves yeah. your white fireplace, and she's yeah, not the everybody, first person to say so. Yeah, everybody was loving your white fireplace. Okay, that's that is an example of just be brave. It, it was a really weird, it's fake, it's fake brick, and it was a really strange color. And I thought, do I get rid of it? But I didn't have the money to put something else in, so I thought, I'm just going to paint it and see what happens. I had nothing to really lose, so I just took latex paint and slapped on there, and, you know, I've been happy with it ever since I did, so don't be afraid to try that kind of stuff. Of course, it's not a working fireplace. No, it's not. So, <laughs> um, so everybody keeps saying, can we come to your house? Yes, for a thousand dollars a day, <laughs> we will come between eight and five with a one-hour break and two fifteen-minute breaks for as many days as you would like. Wow! Yes, we got rid of the dog too. So, oh, oh thank Laura, you, Laura. Super chat. She oh, said thank she you. Loves our oh, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, Laura. Thank you. Yes, poor Mike. He is um, hurting. <laughs> although. I'm not going to say anything. Well, I'm going to say I'm, anything because I can't shut my mouth. I, she has not stopped. <laughs> After Tara we talk stopped. about don't changing your diets and Tara has, she was helping Mike <laughs> carry one end of the toilet out. She was under the sink with him doing that. So I um, did change my diet. <laughs> and I've taken out milk out of my diet and my fibromyalgia is a whole lot better. I have known for years I have a milk sensitivity. I've just been in denial because milk products are good. I am going to try the A2 milk as soon as I can find some, but I have a milk protein sensitivity. I've known this for years. I just keep going off the milk and I feel great. And then I see that cheese and it just calls my name. <laughs> <laughs> that melty, glorious cheese. <laughs> so anyway, I, I have been doing great this move, actually. I haven't even had to take a bath every night because I haven't been sore. And I haven't, I've taken one Alka-Seltzer a day. Colette, so I've been good. Colette says she hopes we're taking a vacation after this. <laughs> and Jill keeps saying something about you guys here on your vacation. Like, it's not a vacation to be under a sink saying, how do I screw these two pipes together? Yeah, you were saying more than that. Oh. Yeah, we should have filmed the oh, real Mike yes. came out should, yesterday. You would have seen the real Mike, that's mm -hmm. for sure. He was kind of green. He's like, no! Oh. <laughs> Some people will get that reference. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we're getting done with that. You folks are busy. Oh, it was funny on the toilets. I heard somebody was commenting on you, and you said something about the toilets in the front lawn. Because mm -hmm. there yeah. were three that they wanted to change, but we only changed two. But I said we should have all three of them sitting out there, and one of them should just sit out there, and when people walk by, just say, hey, take a seat, let's have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be a great welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, so we met my brother's new neighbors. Leave it to me to meet my brother's new neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of tools and we could we needed one and it was pouring down rain and the hardware store isn't like down the street or anything and I said well I'm just gonna go ask your neighbors <laughs> sure enough they had the crescent wrench re mm -hmm. re re needed mm -hmm. and they're very very and you nice got to meet them. And, mm -hmm. yeah so anyway and you know, don't be afraid to go talk to your neighbors yeah so many people don't talk to their neighbors nowadays that's yeah. another subject I'm keeping my mouth alright guys so this is our last show with mom we will probably be be gone unless a tornado blows through and we have to help clean up, which this is Kansas, it could. Now, uh, now what would happen, I was thinking this when we were coming home and your mom was all worried about the hail and all that, I thought, now what would happen if we were coming home after we just did all this work on your brother's house? Then he got blown away. Yeah, blown away. <laughs> Does insurance cover uh, that? Does insurance cover the help? <laughs> I know. So, And in case you're wondering why Mike 
is doing it instead of my brother. My brother has very severe, very severe back pain and back problems, and he can't physically do it. He can't physically do anything. Well, at the and moment, some of the medications so. they were giving him were making him kind of loopy too, so it would be dangerous yeah. for him. Some of these things it would be yeah. dangerous for him to do them. He might really hurt himself. He told my sister in law. He was out of it. He had took his pain medication after work, and he was laying on the couch when, well, he was sort of <laughs> on the couch when we were finishing up. You can watch so, Monday's show if yeah. you want to see. He was doing his best to yeah, be conscious. Stay up but we had left, and we hadn't finished the sink yet, and my sister-in-law came home, and my brother told her, oh, yeah, they have to take all the sink and everything out. And so we saw my sister-in-law today, and she was like, do you really have to take the sink out? <laughs> <laughs> no idea where he got that from, but in his poor pain field mind, it translated that <laughs> way. But so. Shayla, came, <laughs> his wife, came in this today and said, Did he say something about you having to take? Did you have to take the sink out? I'm like, no, he was just <laughs> looped at the moment. So. Paula says, Oh, you didn't offer the neighbors a toilet in exchange for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, oh, anyway. Thank you. Bring it over in a basket, covered up with a little blanket. <laughs> with flowers. All right, guys, please buy our cookbooks to keep the lights on. Visit us at livingonadime.com. Please like, subscribe, and share. It really, really helps us when you tell your friends about us. And give us a thumbs up, please. Even if you don't agree, but you just like us because we're just nice. <laughs> we are just nice. Yeah. We try. Well, most of the time. <laughs> until we have a get it together moment. Don't you agree? <laughs> is mom nice? Yeah. Yeah. Most, oh, of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. When is the time I'm not nice? When you've left your socks in the middle of the floor for the fifth time this week? <laughs> <laughs> See? We know. Aw, thank you, Robin. Please Robin says thank you for up. the fun. A lot of people are commenting on that. I guess this is more fun than I realized. <laughs> All right, guys. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, oh, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye from Kansas. Oh, we're yeah.